Welcome to Inside Outside Innovation, Episode 73. Jeanette Edelstein is Director of External Innovation at Johnson & Johnson. She's also speaking at the Back End of Innovation Summit in Orlando, Florida, October 22nd through the 25th. Our team is excited to start off a series of BEI speakers on our show as we prep to attend this awesome summit that will feature Jeanette along with others like Santi Ramish with Hershey's, Tom Rideout with AAA, and Renata Polizzizio with ESPN. Hi there, everyone. I'm Victory Clafter, the producer of Inside Outside Innovation, the podcast that brings you the latest insights from people who know the most about building lean businesses, innovating within corporations, and disrupting entire industries with passion and precision. Jeanette and Brian started off by talking about fostering that true connection with a startup, but knowing how to keep it casual and friendly with benefits. You know, when you're an expert in an area, you want to be around other folks that have that expertise. So our goal is to try to, you know, proliferate that and create more degrees of connectivity, as well as degrees of freedom. And I think in that space, we also have like our J labs and um, areas where we invite people to literally house in a space that is well-equipped, has the lights and the labs and the equipment and the computers and all that great stuff that you need to really foster and nurture some of your opportunities, but perhaps you don't have the wherewithal. So there's a basically a connection there, but our motto is no strings attached. And what that means is that you can come in there and you don't need to feel obligated, right? And what I love about that is you can say, well, yeah, you're, you don't feel obligated, but you're in a J-Lab. Yeah, but there actually really is that much freedom. So the opportunity is, when, if we say it's meaningful, it obviously means something to you know, a partner on the outside, but it also means something for them to say, okay, well, how, how do I nurture myself? And then how do I spread my wings when I know I'm ready? And we enable them to do what they need to do with whomever. And you know, they could be um, in any space of the ecosystem. How much of the process uh, from your perspective is kind of outward scouting of ideas and people and, and partners out there and actively kind of recruiting them versus uh, uh, folks that are kind of raising their hand and saying, hey, we want to uh, have an opportunity to have dialogue with j Yeah, I mean, I think it's a very um, somewhat balanced, I would say, we articulate, you can even go on our, you know, JJI kind of uh, websites and you'll see, you know, across pharma, pharmaceuticals, our med device, our consumer, you'll see, you know, what we're interested in, what are our targets, what are the areas that we're looking for. So we're very transparent about that. At, and then I think what happens is if people see an opportunity and they say, oh, I, I you know, I know consumers interested in, you know, digital opportunities for consumers or connectedness. Um, hey, let me reach out to them and see what they're looking at. And that's that kind of is the maybe the spark. And what's great about um, DICs is they, they really can be the, the connection point or lifeline within the J&J organization because often you want to connect with J&J, you don't know how, like, or, or any organization for right. that matter. How do you, you know, how do I just call up, you know, whomever and say, I have this great idea. So what the IC does is, is creates, you know, a place to do a, a person and then a process, right? So that it's not like, oh, I gave them this idea and I'm six months to have gone by a year, two years, I don't know. It's very, it should be ex expedited in terms of our responsiveness to say, wow, that's great. Or you know what, it's not, it's a great idea, but it's actually not a focus area for us. So we don't linger and we try to be very mindful. Often, if you think about it, you're a startup, you need, you need to know like minute by minute, second by second, right? Yep. Yep. Um, time is money, so to speak, and more so for those folks. So in that space, that's kind of the role they play. Well, I think this is um. a vital piece, this, you know, kind of that concierge role. Uh, you know, we work with a lot of corporations that are, again, trying to figure out how do they play with startups, but they have no real, uh, you know, they know that it's sexy and it should be, they should be kind of scanning that uh, environment, but really don't know how to get started. Uh, and one of the things we talk about is like, you have to have that kind of key point person who can help the startup navigate um, what's going on with the internal organization and vice versa, you know, helping the uh, the internal organization kind of understand the, the right. dynamics of what's going on outside. Jeanette then walked through what this corporate startup setup actually looks like. So let me um, drill down to 
my area because it kind of I think it'll help kind of maybe give a little bit more detail as to how we operate in that space. So if I use an example like where we may make an equity investment with a partner because they you know need extra funding, et cetera, and then we may either keep it that way to ensure that they keep their foot on the ground, um, or we might actually acquire the organization, that, that company, or the assets. And then potentially our goal, obviously, and that's, this is where my role comes into play, is how do I launch those things and get them into market, get them into consumers' hands, consumers mm-hmm. and, and patients, so to speak. And so, you know, the, the area that I sit in is really around um, how do we work with partners that can give us that commercial avenue. And so it's come through our own ecosystem of partners that we have. And that's mm-hmm. something that I've been very focused on, which is how do we, at least for the space that we sit in with consumers, start to look at who we're working with already and recognize that there are strengths that they have that we probably actually haven't tapped into and probably should to help us, again, synergize, accelerate, and drive differentiated opportunities to market. So in that way, I think what we try to do in this space is really look at that ecosystem and frame much more strategic alliances and partnerships with folks that we feel have good connectivity with us, good, strong relationships, good, you know, values, quite frankly, and as well as are focused on investing in the same spaces. Because at the end of the day, we want to grow each other, right? So we really want to have that shared growth opportunity. We're very transparent about what it is that we want. We also provide a lot of freedom for our partners so that um, you know, the historic way that, you know, I've worked in other organizations as well, where is like, we lock you up for from here to eternity. Right. Um, and honestly, we don't do that anymore. We kind of say, if we don't go out the market or if we somehow decide to pivot and change our, our direction and it doesn't make sense for us to move forward together, you guys go take it or we compensate you for it, you know. So I think there's a lot of ways that we've changed, which has, what I've seen is, is really pivoted and um, disrupted how our partners are starting to see us and how folks in the in the industry are starting to see us, which I think is one. It's not necessarily uncommon, but for an, a large organization like like ourselves, I think it's been I would say quite re- energizing, but also giving us new pathways for driving different business models to deliver in our business. So you might be wondering. Does this approach work for Horizon 3 disruptive innovation or more for augmentative innovation? I think it's way more on the latter, which is more on how do we drive our existing space a bit more effectively? Because, you know, sometimes I call it like what's in the jar versus what's out of the jar, right? Mm -hmm. And the former, which is that disruptive, you know, how do you sort of, so to speak, obsolete what you have today is... I, I would say anybody that is in any of the industry that we, we play in would be silly not to be focused on. So obviously we have a focus on that, but it is not an everyday occurrence, right, for anybody, I think, admittedly, to find that. However, we, need, we do need to spend the effort, and that's partly what's um, nice about having an external innovation organization is We don't sit inside our structured organization per se. Mm -hmm. We sit a little bit out to work across that organization. So what I mean by that is I work across all of the consumer, let's say what we call our brands or our need states, to help them rather than sitting within one, right? And you can argue, I think there's pros and cards to either, but what we see as an advantage for that is that we can make opportunities bigger. We also have a different vantage point and we're slightly removed from that onus, but at the same time, we have a huge responsibility to deliver on the commitments that we have, right? right? If you go to the back end of Innovation Conference, and we highly suggest that you do, here's what you can expect Jeanette to talk about. As a very, you know, relatively structured organization and large organization, how do we kind of bring that entrepreneurial thinking, that entrepreneurial kind of thinking um, into the into the culture to eliminate a lot of the things that, you know, you don't want to be detractors, you know, one of which can be, wait, that's my job, right? So that's one thing. Like, I don't, I don't I'm not here, nobody's here to say, we're going to go outside. That means we're not going to go inside. It just means we're going to pivot differently. And this is, and this is how you're going to engage. And this is how we're going to enable you to do things that you might actually have wanted to do more of because we're going to, you know, 
give ourselves more shots on goal, so to speak. Right. So it's it's really how we're. I always say it's it's the way we articulate within our own in, internal organization that's so key to being successful when we go outside, right? Because going outside and working with partners is like super easy and wonderful and it's fun, right? But when you talk about the internal organization and you're when you're big, how do you find that lean, mean, you know, nimble way of driving things? And that's that's partly what you know, myself and my team were trying to do is trying to show the organization we can be more agile, more focused, as long as we are putting the clear choices in front of ourselves and understanding what those choices mean. Jeanette gave advice for the innovator in a mid-sized company, too. And basically, sometimes it just takes asking and some elbow grease to do something differently. I think, and maybe this has just come with experience, don't wait to have everything be super well defined. I'm a big believer in, um, you know, there's a bit of brute force that sometimes has to happen in order Mm -hmm. to execute and get things out the door. And sometimes you just have to be deliberate and focused. The other thing I would say is as much as you can to be transparent and clear about the intention, then folks in senior leadership positions and stuff have clarity on that and can really shoulder you through that process because the more, and, and it's not about detail really per se, it's more about making sure that when you, you know, are trying to do something that is different from what is, you know, standard or structured per se, you give yourself the ability to ask, you know, ask for folks to say, you know what, I'm going to do this differently. We're going to try to do this and we're going to live it to fruition you know, as long as it makes, you know, you, you don't want to go and hit a brick wall, but as long as it's it's making the, the right, you know, choices for getting to, like I said, something that is, I'm a big believer of deliverables and make sure we <laughs> you get action. I mean, I'd love to, I love strategy and framing up strategy. And I think that's critical as a foundation, but I also love to see things that, you know, people have worked hard on and, you know, see others uh, benefit from it. That wraps up this episode of Inside Outside Innovation. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week when we hear another BEI speaker with Santi Ramesh from Hershey's. We know you have lots of opinions, so share one with us on iTunes in the review section or on Twitter at the IO Podcast. Until next time, go out and innovate.